there's the way you plan moments, how you handle plan the moments, like the moments you plan, then how you handle unplanned moments. Here's a great question people can ask themselves. What would the person who has everything I want do right now? Our investment in life is the actions. The return is the competency and the confidence in doing this thing. And then it gives us less of the imposter syndrome. So over time, you feel more like that person. I could not be more excited. That was really loud. Today, I get to share with you the absolutely mind-blowing conversation I had with a former NFL player and American Ninja Warrior, the host of the Ah Shift podcast, Anthony Trucks. Now, if you've ever felt like others are, are passing you by, or maybe you're stuck in a season of doubt and self-judgment, or maybe just maybe you don't feel as successful as you'd like to be, and all of those feelings. This episode is for you because I talk about all of that and a whole lot more with the one, the only, Anthony Trucks. Welcome to the We Do Hard Things podcast. So you, you have, you have obviously with your childhood and, and all of the the things that you've done in your life, but but it seems like you've really dig down into this idea of identity shifting. And so the place yeah. I want to start, which is something that I used to strongly believe. I used to strongly believe that people cannot change. They want to change. Yeah. Life trauma happens, which changes people. Um, a few times in your life, you might get lucky enough to have one of these breakthroughs that changes yeah. you in your core and you maintain it. But mm -hmm. I used to very strongly believe people will not change because they can't, because they don't want to, because it's not worth the effort. They'll slide back. Mm -hmm. Can people change? Yeah, man. I mean, it is an interesting thing. As you say that, I, there's, there's a part of me that thinks the philosophical can human beings change. Uh, if you think back to like scripture, Paul changed, like, you don't know how, how biblical you are, but like people change, right? Um, well, when I think about Paul, the line that goes through my head is, why do I do the things that I know that I shouldn't and yet yeah. don't do the things that I know that I should? And As so human, I've yeah. always, I've always used that. Well, like, well, if Paul, <laughs> if Paul's well, you know, doing that, then I guess I can do the same thing. <laughs> you all can. There's, so there's a, there's a, it's called a neuroscience level to it, right? So you have neuroplasticity. Our brains, there's a bunch of synapses and chemicals that are moving. And the fact that the brain can change and I am housed in my brain if that can change through certain ways, then why wouldn't I on a, like a physiological level be able to change, which means I can. Now, you did hit a nail on the head. It is very difficult. People just, it, there's so much that goes against it, whether it's a certain belief system that I was in, ingrained into as a child growing up in terms of, you know, like what I was told life is and loves about and money is. There are things that are very hard to adjust. That's why, I mean, racism exists in this. If somebody was raised over years being taught this thing, then for me, it's like I would have to go against the belief that I have. And then also the support system of people, human beings around me that also have the belief. I don't want to have to adjust myself because then I got to address the fact that maybe I was wrong. There's so much pain to have to face. I got to face myself. I got to face my, my support system. I might be lonely. Um, I may have to adopt a new one, which one, right? So when you look at the fact like that people have to change, it's not just change. Oh, it's just a word. There was so much depth to it. And, and the thing is, is our brain doesn't consciously process every level of it, but subconscious we do. And I think, well, maybe we do. I believe that in my head, I think I do. <laughs> and then it's, it's met with an emotion that I can't even consciously put into words. It's like, you know, my gut just, it doesn't feel right is what we say because we can't put it into words, but it's like, if I go back and think about all these little things, like, yeah, it's difficult. However, my wife has changed. I have changed. Like, dude, if you'd asked me this question back, uh, 2000, what man, 2011, 10 or 11, like I was at the back end of a divorce and my wife was doing her thing. Like she had already changed. And so I'm like, first off, people can change. She was great. Now she's not. Uh, and life sucks. And then now after a lot of growth as a human, there's been a lot of change to both of us. We're back married in an amazing marriage. So I am living firsthand a reality of, yes, human beings can vastly change, but just like with her, it is incredibly difficult. There's a lot of things that go into the science of it and, and habits and, and perspectives and mindset and identity. But yeah, short, short answer is yes. Well, and, and so when, when I say it, I realize that any, everyone would say, of course, people change, you know, you change as you grow, you change as you mature, you change, yeah. you change. I guess what I was trying to hit the nail on the head of, and, and maybe, um, you know, your marriage in terms of um, being married, separating, working through, 
you know, the, 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 the rebuilding the chemistry, the friendship, yeah. and then, uh -huh. and then the connection and then where you are now. Yeah. Um, uh, I can understand that. I guess it's, can people change in the area? So when I think of change, I think of the things that hold us back. Gotcha. So can we actually change in the things that hold us back or, you know, is it just, these are the things that hold me back. This is who I am. This is my childhood. This is, this is this, you know, and just lean into the, there's two schools of thought, right? Like, don't worry about your, your, um, the things that hold you back. Just focus on the things that you're really great at. Yeah. And then some say strengthen the things that you're not so good at. So you're all well-rounded. I, you know, I think that there's a, a level of trying both and see one fits for you. We are vastly different. So that's, that's kind of it, but it's a cop out for the answer. Uh, th there is an aspect, right? I think we think about humanity is like, we all have these, uh, and this is where I like, I go to the identity work of, of what I talk about. We are these hardware, like we are these, these biological computers. And if you think about a physical computer, I'm on one, you're on one. Uh, they have operating systems. They run programs. You know, this is where on Zoom's a program, you know, Chrome's a program. Now, if my operating system sucked, if it was like, you know, old, it wouldn't really process well enough to actually have this program operate. And so what hold us back is the fact that we want to run a program in our life. We want to have a better career. We want to have a better relationship. We want to be healthier. It's a program of our life, but the operating system, it can't manage it right now. It's like you get that spinning wheel of death. I try it. Oh, I don't want to do this diet. So I stop it. Right. Or, right. you know, I want to be better my, my marriage, but I just, I can't figure out how to, my wife, she keeps asking me to do stuff and I don't want to do it just because she's asking me to like these weird little asking? nuances. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Like to, you know, telling? The, yeah, telling would be that better way of saying it. And so we have these dynamics. What happens is a lot of us don't realize that, that that's, you know, the world giving you these like the alerts, right? So computer gives you an alert. Hey, do you want to update Chrome as a new update? Do you want to do it? No, no, snooze 24 hours. Hey, Zoom as a new update. Do you want to download and do it? No, nah, I got a meeting I got to go to. So we do is we don't do it mostly because the time it's going to take and the frustration that causes. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of like we push it off. And then over time, the program, which is still getting, you know, newer and better, it's adjusting. We're not. So all of a sudden, it just the computer can't run. A lot of us human beings are, are pretty much in the realm of being these new hardware biological computers. But because of the fact that we have an upgrade, we're running off like, you know, Windows 95 for our lives. And it's, it's based on what we were, we were just brought up with. We've reached the, the, the outer limits of the capacity for our system to have the programs in our life run the way we desire. And so what you have to do is go to this level where what you're talking about is, well, how do you do that? You have to upgrade. It's, and it's interesting because upgrading would change, but it's not. I think what it is is things external change when the internal updates. And it's different than like saying you got to be better. I, I want to kind of call it a switch a little bit, like once you flip that switch. But really what it is is I have to go in and download, like computer does, download all the things that got to be updated. And this is where you hit that sticking point. Cause then I got to listen to people tell me the areas that I suck mm -hmm. and I, nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do that. And it doesn't feel good. Right. Come, come to terms with that, that it, you know, it's your responsibility. To know it is. Been, You're right? the common denominator in all your problems. Right. And so you have these updates that'll pop up like, Hey hun, I need you to be better as a husband. Ah, snooze. Hey, can you be a better dad? Ah, snooze. Can you get in better shape so you can go to nah, snooze boss? Hey, can you get into work earlier? You've been late. Nah, snooze. I don't want to listen to it. And we just keep pushing it off and our operating system doesn't get any better. And we just protect it and say we're fine and we just go through our life and wonder why things suck. And it's the world sucks like, ah, the world's a mirror to you. So the reality is, is once you can step back and say, where am I really faulting? Like where's like I said, where am I the common denominator in my problems? The moment you can realize that there's some nugget there that you may not want to see. But when you do, it allows you to understand what updates you need to make. And the updates come for us in habits and actions and really perspective behind the scenes that drive those, right? And also reactions. It's, I call it the hard formula. It's habits, actions, reactions, and drivers. But once I know what I need to do, not what I'm hearing, you know, somebody else tell me like, hey, uh, Mark told me to do this. Like, oh, I'm going to do that. Maybe it was good for Mark. Maybe not a good thing for me. Maybe my update's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I find out what I got to do because I listen. Now I can do the work to update. And in the way that I start to operate allows me to change my life. And the reality, if you think about, let's keep it logical and not go super concept right now. It, the, the difference between people, it's how I do things. It's like how I, identity is this. It's who you are and what you're doing when you're not thinking about who you are and what you're doing. Ah, so over the last two months, I have 
really been facing some actual like personally hard decisions, like learning about, um, you know, I've, I've had anxiety for a very long time, mm-hmm. but learning how much it's actually holding me back. Um, uh, I, I've started therapy because I think I might have a personality disorder and realizing mm-hmm. ah, how much this might actually be holding me back. Mm-hmm. And what I found within that is, of course, every time you have clarity, you're like, <laughs> you're like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like it was better when I was ignorant Ignorance and things bliss. weren't working. Now I'm not ignorant, but things still aren't working. Yeah. Here's, here's, the, here's the, the problem I have. Um, I find you can get lost in the uncertainty because I used to trust my gut, mm-hmm. but my gut would lead me down the wrong path. But at least I could trust my gut. Yeah. Now I know that trusting my gut leads me down the wrong path. I wouldn't what, say I know what, that. What do I trust? What do I, uh, yeah, it's interesting what do I that. do? Like, you know, like, like if I know that I'm bad with people and I want to get better with people, I can't just rely on my instinct or reactions because that has not worked out in the past. I need, you know, to download a new thing. Yeah. I need to rewire this thing, but I don't even know how to go about it. I know I have a problem. I can't trust my gut. What do I do? And I get, I personally get lost in that. Yeah, I don't think you have to. I think I think you might be looking at it, and maybe I'm wrong. And I, I this is just my my initial gut reaction based on what I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm hearing my gut, <laughs> and also uh, me doing this for a long time. A lot of people, there is this uh, desire for humans to come to an end point of a, of a understanding to start moving from, and you've done that. You've said I can't trust it, and there's a stopping point, which means you're now committing to the fact that you can't trust it, which is a very difficult place. Because here's what I think. I think that your the gut is a collection of experiences that have all been tucked away back into my brain. And the hippocampus is where it floats around. And what happens is when something happens and my brain takes it in, it's something going on back there. It's not my conscious thought, but then it provides me an informational kind of thought with an emotion. And what happens is we then make a choice from that. So I don't know if you need to not trust the gut, but maybe when you hear it, the filtered response may be different. Think about a reaction that somebody... um somebody cuts you off, right? Somebody cuts you off in traffic all of a sudden. Oh, this person, how dare you do this to me, right? But if you think about it, well, what if that person's in a rush because their their wife just fell at home? Mm -hmm. And the thing that I I want to have that be is I believe that for us, no moment has meaning except the meaning we place upon it. So no matter what happens in life, we place a meaning. Now, when my gut provides information, that information is only going to come through based on what I choose to do with it. So I don't believe your gut's wrong. You've had those experiences. You can't, you can't say they didn't happen. You had these things come in. They filtered in. They existed. Now, when they come forward, you now get to choose what to do with them differently. So maybe it's not trusting the gut per se, but it's trusting the decision from the information being provided. And then you just get to readjust it over time. You realize, okay, cool. I'm in the moment. I'm feeling this way. I typically would do this, but let me breathe for seven seconds. Let me consciously think through the emotion of it. Okay, let me try this differently. And now you start to rewire that pattern. And now you no longer have to worry about, I don't trust my gut. Because to make this stand on the lines, I don't trust my gut, that's going to leave you in a really indecisive space for a lot of your life. Because what do I do? Do I trust it? You, you have to go forward again and figure out how to get to the point of trusting the gut again. Because once you do, you realize like all that time in the past wasn't lost. All the information that came in, it's not bad information. You don't trash it all out. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You say, okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to realize there's some nuances that I got to adjust when the information comes forward, but still listen to it. I think Hmm. that's really interesting because, because I I find that you can get lost. You know, people talk about analysis paralysis and you get lost in research and everybody can get lost in a different part of the process. Yeah. A perfectionist can get lost in trying to make sure it's perfect and and what have Mm -hmm. you. Um, But, but it was, uh, it was easier for me. And I think it's easier for most people if you just do your thing because it's safe and it's comfortable and you do your thing and you can trust it. Yeah. Now you bump up against the fact you're not getting the output you want. You're not getting yeah. the outcome you want. And you question, why does this keep happening to me? Mm-hmm. And yeah, ultimately that that's I, the place where I could, I could just spend my whole life circling. Yeah. And I think that that is where it feels like a thing where I don't know to dig in the path. And so like, this is the work I do. Genuinely, you're in, you're in the bubble of it because what happens is a lot of people think like, that's just who I am. That's, that's the, my identity, right? When I mentioned earlier, I, you are who you are when you're not thinking about who you are and what you're doing. That's because over time, we, 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 we developed habits, adopted habits, you know, or we you took a certain mindset, took some big actions in an area. And what happened is we, we were always being who we were. We're always being somebody on the day, right? The actions of being. But we never realized the being is actually becoming. 
we're being something that, that has an output or return that creates us into this person and becoming somebody. And so what I look at is like what I'm trying to figure out people in this area and they're saying like, I don't know what's, what I look at is, okay, cool. When you are being, which is the, like, I'm unconscious. Somebody cuts me off. I'm working. Something pops in my, how am I handling those moments? And none of us consciously think about it. It was just something that we've, we've over time developed a way to just handle things in the in-between moments. And it's not mindset because mindset is like tools and affirmations and structure. And then when that, when I hit a moment that I that, that doesn't, you know, help me and I, I have no more tools, identity fills the gap in whether I stand up or I sit down. Right. So here's what I recommend is when you get those moments, is start thinking through like, okay, and there's, it's pretty much like the operating system, we'll call it. It's what I talk about a computer. There's the way you plan moments, how you handle plan the moments, like the moments you plan, then how you handle unplanned moments. Mm-hmm. And this is where you can find this sweet spot to adjust it. It's kind of, it's kind of there's more depth to it. I'm gonna give you like the overarching. Whenever I sit and plan out my life and what I wanna do and how I wanna get it done, we, we do a great job of thinking at our level of uh, limitation. We see what we think we can do. So I'm going to shoot for that because I don't want to feel bad if I shoot for something high and doesn't hit it, right? Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about hit your moonshot and go big. Nobody does. No, no. <laughs> it's so crazy, right? Uh, just, just so you know, to maybe even help with context, I loved the slow the slow go kind of analysis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I landed on Dreamer. So I don't know if that's a hey, good thing or a bad thing, but here you that's go. That's a bad thing. It's that's not a bad thing? thing. You but it is because a dreamer is a person that uh, <laughs> that does not seek opportunities and also is fearful of opposition, so shuts down when it happens. And it's there's there's people that are there. It's not a bad thing overall because you can change it, right? And so what I look at is whenever I see people in a space, I say, okay, first off, how do you plan the moment? So a lot of people they don't plan big, but if you can plan big at a level I call it one inch out of control, give me one inch out of your comfort zone, man. Don't go crazy. Just like one inch that makes you go, damn it, if I got that, that'd be really cool, right? And it gives you a sort of like, oh, a little push, a little like if I get that, it'd be great. I can dream. And then you can visualize it, like palpably taste it, sit in the car, you know, you know like vision, visualize what it's going to be like to have that house, walk in the house, sit in the couch. Like it'll give you this taste of like, that's crazy, but wow, what if, right? It's doable because you've seen it around your life. But for some reason, the feedback from your, your life has told you it may not be possible for you. Dream about it anyways, right? So have that. Now you're going to start thinking about if that's the plan, you know, thing I want to get done, well, what do I got to do to get there? This is where a lot of people, they have their vision boards and they, they get planners and have no idea how to plan. It's amazing. And then what happens is they don't have plans, but if they do get lucky enough to have a plan in place and they sit down, here's the beautifully difficult part of all of us humans. We will get to the moments that we know we've already planned can change our life and we don't take them fully or at all. Mm-hmm. We halfway do it or maybe we kind of do it for a day or two and then and we won't even like admit to it but the reality is if i'll ask somebody what was something you want to do six the last habit you want to start when you started okay cool you started what happened oh i stopped doing it why and i'll make a bit excuse not true man this is what you gave yourself as an excuse to sleep better that night and you feel okay not doing it the reality is in that planned moment you didn't commit because nothing matters but the moment that it matters like if I have this thing I'm supposed to do, I become somebody different by being the person that do, does that thing. If I don't do this thing, I don't get to the point of becoming that human, which means I don't have the things that human has. Because if I was already that person, I'd already have those things. So most people get to the moments when they've planned and they, they find ways to procrastinate, uh, to make excuses to do something else, to, oh, this was more important at the moment. They, they don't commit, like dig. And then what happens is they fall apart. And then what's even worse is unplanned moments because life is what happens between your plans. And very few people have a strategy for the moments that happen across their life that they didn't foresee coming. Mm-hmm. So when it comes up, do they get, they could blow them off and the train falls off the track. You just get a little, little puff. And it's sad because for a lot of people, you could easily install something in the moment. It's like, okay, this happened. What do I do right now? And, and go down a specific ritual you might put in place that allows you to say, okay, cool, I'm staying the course. And here is the beautiful thing when you do this. When you create big plans, you, you are able to execute in the moments that, that there's, they come up from the planning and you handle unplanned moments. Over time, you get to this, this level where you end up waking up one day and after consistently doing things, all the stuff that used to be hard is now easy. And it's yeah. who you are to do this thing. 
that's the, that's the magic piece that few people are noticing about the level of success above them. If you were to ask somebody who's successful, I kid you not, Mark, to a T every person, you ask somebody, who were you when you were unsuccessful? They will rattle off things that are far from who they are now, or they'll literally say this, I was somebody different back then. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so, it's so d- discreet, but man, this is like, this, this is where my work was like, what does that mean? They didn't but, say but, a different do mindset. They not, do they not? Do certain, maybe it's not everybody, but do they not slide back? Oh, we can. 100% you know, like, we can. You know, you, you, you did something for four years straight and it was great. And, and, and now, all. you know, you're, you're, what does Tony Robbins say? This year's eights become next year's fives. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, like I was getting eight out of 10. I was getting nine out of 10. Mm-hmm. And then it just slides because it's less, exciting, it's less interesting. You know, off you go. Things change. Things yeah. change. And that's, I mean, the same for me. Like I was doing Ninja Warrior for, for like three years and now I'm like, I don't feel like being that skinny and hanging on stuff anymore. <laughs> and, the, and the reality is- I, Grip I've, strength. You've let your grip strength go. Oh, eh? my grip strength. So there, I still crush cans and stuff, but I just can't <laughs> hang my whole body like I used to. So I'm sure I could still do it, but I wouldn't be able to hang up as long. But yeah, no, things change. That That's the reality of life is, you know, inspiration changes. Things you want to do change. Should you worry about that? Mourn the loss of that? Should you try and- Like, are we, are we stacking- I, I, this might be a stupid question, but I feel no, like never you stupid. should be stacking things and holding on, like stacking, right. holding on, stacking, holding on. And it's, right. it's you're stair stepping up the thought of focus. You know, I didn't get fit for a really long time. I was never mm-hmm. fit. <laughs> My editor, Josh was tired of me telling the story over and over again, but I lost 50 pounds <laughs> in two years. It was never competitive, was never fit and never ate yeah. well. And I knew at one point in my life, I'd have to like mm-hmm. when I was growing up, I was like, Oh, when I'm older, I'll have to eat better. Yeah. If I don't want to die young. Um, but uh, that's not something I want to let go of. Like, it's just, it, I have to work to make sure Here's what's interesting. go back to the way it used to be. Yeah. We have a capacity as humans though. And, and what happens is as you do things great, it creates more opportunities and it stacks stuff into your life. And so what happens is if you don't upgrade how you operate, like literally, like I'm talking about, then the new stuff has no place to fit. So some stuff has to go. So when people say I should be stacking, hold on, stacking, hold on, like, it would only make sense if they truly understood that they are an unlimited capacity being, but most people don't. And most people don't have an inherent system in place, a strategy for their life in place to consistently do what you're talking about. So some things do have to create space. It's, it's not a, I don't think it's a bad thing though. My wife, like she has all these, she's doing track right now, college track because she didn't do college track when she was doing it in college. And so she had her master's and now she's doing college track that has to edge something out. And it's okay. Like, so she's not always present doing dinner every night like she used to. That, that's different. For now, is it bad? Should she sit there and be like, this is horrible? No. I think we should accept the fact that we have the ability to do new things and it does have to create space. When we were kids, we had this wide space. What could be done? You could do anything you wanted, Mark. As we get older, we get tighter, tighter, tighter. Now we're, we're in scuba goggles, you know? And I think what happens in life is we think we got to stay in the scuba goggles zoom, but really no. Like life is go back out and see what else is in the world. Go find new things and fun things to do. And in doing so, what happens is you do have to have some things edge out. And if you are constantly finding yourself being better, you're going to find new things you can do. And that's almost a natural occurrence. You, you know, what? I, I, think, I think the way that I see it, and I don't want it to be this way, but the way that I see it is, you know, those vests you put on and they got like elastic bands on mm-hmm. these crazy shows and you run as yeah. fast as you can. And you try to get as far as you can, but it's like yeah. going to snap you back. I feel like at the center of our life, we have the five or six, you know, we have, we have wealth, we have health, we have happiness, we have spirituality yeah. and family, all of those things. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like you're, you're running off in this direction, you're running, you're running and you're putting all of your effort into going as far as you can. But, but if you take your eye off the ball, it's going to snap you right back to your core person that you were, if you're not careful. Mm, yeah. I don't want it to be that way, but so I'm hoping you're telling me, Mark, it's not that way. It's not. Here's it's the secret. Okay. So why, yeah. why do I think that, do, why do you know you, uh, that, like, so that, we will that live, live our lives. Is. We'll live our lives in a way that make the stories we tell true. So the crazy part is what I would go and venture into saying it. Cause I don't know that to be true in my life. Right. And that's the thing is if that was the case, I'd be snapped back in a whole lot of ways right now. <laughs> I mean, and so what, what I've realized is, as uh, I think there's almost a part of us that we tell a story, we do, and then we find a way in some unconscious way, the way we're out, we're not thinking about it, it snaps us back. It's the people who start having success and all of a sudden it internally feels weird and overwhelming. So they stop doing some of those things and then they don't have the same traction and progress and they do slide back. 
But if you go look at it, there'll be an excuse laid upon like all oh, the world changed, things went. But really, if I sat down and dug and I do, like it ends up being like there was something they were like, I don't know if I deserve that. Part of me didn't think I was meant to have that. And so I think to snap back your feeling, I don't think that is a, that's not a life rule. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a you know, a, a, it was called a universal rule. I think at the end of the day, the, the, the fact that people have not, there are people in the world who have not had that happen is a testament to that. So now I have to sit back and say, what's different about them? What, what, what make, are they just genetically different and they're not? Are they, it was it nature versus nurture? I don't know, but here's what I do know. When I sit with these people, they are weird to me. They're like genuinely, when I say weird, it's not that it's weird, bad, but it's like they're different. And what it is, it's when, when we as our bubble of friends talk about things that are problems or we see our schedule, what's going on, literally they'll look at that like, and they'll be like, they, they laugh. I've been around these people and I'll be like, what do you do? And I did it. They're like, that, that's it? You can't get that done? Like, oh, what happened? I just, I thought you were going to like justify and you know, validate me. No. Yes. So what you find is they operated a different tick. It's just a different way that they handle the moments. And now they're looking at what's plannable and they see it different. And when they, when they get in those moments, it's who they are to move past. And now this thing became easy. So all of us have these things that are just, they're difficult to us. But kind of like I, I was a, a lifting guy, you know, I used to play NFL football. So we lifted a lot. If you think about conceptually, like life is kind of like a weight room. I go up against things that are very heavy. It's just, it is just naturally, it's heavy, it's hard. It may not, I may not verbalize it that way, but it's like, man, it's hard to write this book. It's hard to launch this podcast. It's hard to get in shape. And what we say is it's hard, right? And so in the weight room, some people, imagine if you were in the weight room, you want to lift this weight, you go to lift it, uh, it doesn't budge. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave the weight room. And then I, I just all of a sudden hope if I come back in a month, I'm going to be strong enough to move it. No, right? But if I go back and, okay, I'm going to use lighter weights and I build up and build up and build up, I eventually move that weight. Then at some point in time, that weight becomes my warm up. Mm-hmm. Well, the same thing happens for people in life. They face these difficult things. Some people leave the weight room and they come back in a month and like, why can I do it now? Oh, I just suck. And they, when, we, when we, we justify to make ourselves feel good and say, it's not supposed to be in humanity is this is what it's like. And we make these rules up that we then live by when the reality is somebody else is walking in that weight room, lifting that thing like it's their gym warm up. And if you go right. and listen to who they are, they just start at a different level and they kept showing up, lifting lightweights. Then they got to that weight. They moved past. That's why they look at you and go, why can't you curl five pounds? What's going on here? You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that to them, it's five pounds. To you, it's I can't move the weight. So how do we then, because I, I, have, I have seen this, you know, like um, I get upset. Uh, I, I'm 37. So I, I'm still Dang. young, but I feel really old. Are you 37 as well? Well, I'm 37. It's like in like a month and a half. Oh, way to go, 1983. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I feel old. I don't know if you feel old. I'm bumping up against all my friends are 40 I don't. and 50. My knees do though. Okay. Okay. Great. <laughs> but, but you know, like, so during COVID our gym shut down, yeah. I ran, I don't know, 5k, I, I ran a 5k at least every day. And then I think two or three times a week I'd run a 10k. Yeah. And, and so when we came back to the gym, I I'm back on the treadmill and I hit my old numbers and I'm like, Oh, the treadmill feels slow. Oh, my cardio yeah. is amazing. So I'm saying to my coach, I'm like, like, I just ran all summer. Like, I guess my cardio got better. And he's like, yeah, like yeah. if you run, your cardio will get better. And I was like, That's oh, okay. Yeah. No one taught me that. Like, you know, like I didn't learn that along the way. So I sometimes feel a little bit foolish for learning these lessons so late in yeah. life. No, but, bad. but another like- one was like, I thought that people who went, worked out all the time and went to the gym all the time liked it. Right. Like they taught, everybody talks about like the, you know, the, the, um, the, the addictive nature of working out and how great it is. So I thought they liked it. I don't like it. So Mm -hmm. I guess I don't have it. Um, You know, Hey, you have succeeded on stage um, and in the NFL and in, in, in building multiple businesses and all these things, I guess you have it. And I don't No, I don't have it, I suppose. And so I know that that's total BS. And yet I think all of us have these, as you're saying, excuses or stories that we tell ourselves, to, I guess, hit the fact that we just don't want to do the work or. Yeah, it does. It helps you, will help you sleep at night. Who wants to lose sleep? Imagine that ran in your head all day, how distant you were from, like I call it an identity gap. If you think about this, a gap between who you are and what you have and the person who has what you want. And when you, if you had to stand there and look at this cliff all day long and like, look at the gap, it would make you feel bad. So 
That's why I live my life in that. I live my life in that gap, which is why I'm in therapy hey, now. <laughs> we all have gap. I got the gap for things I want to do, it's, but I just realized what the gap means, right? And so the thing is, you have to do one of two things in these moments. One, I have to um, find a way. To, and this is the thing: we need to be at peace inside, and we'll find ways to lie to ourselves to do it. Unfortunately. Sure. So, what does that gap mean? You were just about to say. Yeah, yeah. So the gap is the gap is two two different ways you can look at it. Okay. One, I can say there's gap exists, and it's a separation. I feel it, and I can do one thing, which is I can find a reason to feel better by demonizing that person on that gap. So I don't have to cross the chasm. Think about how like when people are poor growing up, they, they demonize rich people. Well, guess you're never gonna be a rich person because you think it's a demon. No one wants to be a demon, right? So I demonize that person so I can lower them so I feel better. And that's the one that most people do. It's why you hear people do stuff and their inherent thing is like, yeah, but they didn't do this and she sucks. And you know, the other option is to say, oh damn, I suck. I, they're doing a damn good job. I got to be better. And now I have to go the long journey of finding a way to improve whatever needs to be done. And that's the one few people actually do. And so that's where we'll sit in that space. We'll make these excuses, make the justifications for what's going on and why I'm not there, whatever it is, as opposed to saying, damn it, I want that. I just suck at whatever it takes to do that right now. Let me figure it out. And if I don't want to figure out, it can show up and saying, oh, well, you know, they're just special. They're just better. Like the gym, to be honest, like, I, I enjoy the pain of a workout. In fact, the data shows that if you enjoy something, like, and you find some piece of, of you know, s- s- I don't know, enjoyment, like joy within it, like even if it sucks, you'll do it more often. You got to find, you got to connect the dots yourself, however. So most people working out, yeah, they hate doing it in the beginning. But the idea is to find some little nuance. I Maybe mean, if I work out, I'm going to get a donut. You know, I'm going to get, you know, if I burn 500 calories, I can eat 200 calories of donuts, right? I find a little bit of a joy or something, or maybe it's, you know, I'm going to do it so I can see the number on, on the scale go down one every week. That's my goal. You find a little piece in it. And what happens is now it's not about walking to the top of the mountain, only staring at the peak of the mountain. Cause then every step you're realizing how far you are away from it. But if I walk and I look at all these beautiful flowers and the little moses over there pooping on the ground, like, oh, how cool. Or, you, know, like, you enjoy these weird parts of it. Well, now what happens is a little bit of enjoyment. Now it becomes this thing where, and this is where I say, and people lose it, like it becomes who you are. Here's the difference between that. Before it takes willpower. When it's who you are, it's effortless effort because it feels weird if you don't do it. Like that's the magic space. When you have, when you've gone this, this level, you've done things enough to where, dude, it just, I just feel like I'm not me. If I don't catch that workout, I don't feel like I'm, I'm not me. If I don't get up on that stage and do that thing, yes. there's a different drive. It's, it's more of like an alignment space. It's an alignment with who I am and the effort becomes easier to do. But so it's interesting because when, when you talk about the analogy for, for the, the chasm that you have to cross, you, you know, we, we fall into two categories, you say. Mm-hmm you know, demonize or look and say, okay, what do I have to do? I think I, I would suggest that there's probably a third category though, too, mm-hmm. which is, which is, um, I don't want to say apathy, but, mm-hmm. but it's like, well, if I can't be the best at it, what's the point? If I can't do it forever, why try? Um, yeah. if I'm, if I'm, if I'm not going to be as good as my neighbors, um, I'm not demonizing them. They're, they're doing really, really well. I guess it's great, but yeah. you know, the, the, there's must be this third category too, right? Yeah, you, can, you can throw it in there. I've never ventured down that one because I think it ends up being that whole um, I, that quote that they say is our biggest fear is not that we're incapable, but that we're more powerful than we believe, right? It's something in that mm-hmm. same realm. And uh, and I get what you're saying. It's that thought of like, oh, why even try? And I think that gets to the point of, and I, I wouldn't, I would bubble it myself into the demonizing because it's not that you're you're saying that they're they're horrible people. But it is, it's, it's diminishing the fact that, that, that I can do, which means that there's a space, maybe there is a third, because I don't, I don't think people inherently think they can't. It's odd. Like, I, I, I think like if I wanted to, I think there's a way that you can look at the path of what somebody took that was non-genetic that got them a certain level of success. And all it is is things that you look at and go, holy crap, I couldn't do that. It's too, too much. Mm-hmm. And, and the only difference between you and them is just time. It's it. Time that, doing that, the same thing. They time. They gave it a shot, and you're not even willing to take an at bat. Like that's it. You know. But this does actually. But, but I think there's work. a group of people though who yeah. won't even take, won't even take the oppor- You know, yeah. maybe us dreamers well, well, won't even take the opportunity. Not yeah. not because of good or bad or whatever. It's just like. Yeah. Well, think about it this way: if uh, if you his thing, I would lead myself in a path of wondering why they believe that in the first place. 
And there is a way that you can figure that out. There, there's a space and this this uh, what I call the ideal identity between your beliefs and your actions. And it's if I believe something to be possible and I take an action and I, I fail at it, I, I diminish part of my personal, uh, we'll call it pride, my positive ego. If I do it and do well, it grows my ability to think I can do things. That's why they say small wins leads to bigger action towards a bigger win. Because people have this belief of, you know, I, I can't even do anything. I can't. What's that coming from? Because when you were a kid, you didn't think that. You thought you could cross the dam, you know, j- with one leap, jump over the house, you know, yeah, yeah. jump off roofs. So where <laughs> this, did that come from? plastic shopping bag is just like a parachute, right? Here right. we go. <laughs> so something happened in there. What it was is life happened. And what you did is you, you accepted this identity from whatever it was and you took actions. You were being from that. You became this person. And now you are basing all your decisions, future tense, on what happened past tense. Not realizing that what happened past tense is not a death sentence. Mm-hmm. It's just what happened. And if you think, if you go back to like, okay, how did it happen? How was I thinking? How was I doing things? What did I do? Was it even a failure? I've talked to guys who were like, I launched this thing and didn't make seven figures. So it was a, it was a failure. But bro, you made like $800,000. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, so it's like, what, what are you gauging these things off? And I think when you can, I call it reframe your failures, uh, you can actually find these nuggets of a little bit of inspiration and hope that says, maybe I can try it again. And you try something. And here's a unique thing I've always found is somebody always sets this goal and aspiration that's typically not even their own scale. That's the big problem too. Sometimes the gap we see is not a gap that we should see. Sometimes the gap I see is the gap that the world says I should have to cross. And so now they're sitting there in a space thinking like, I don't even, I don't even feel driven across this, but I'm, I'm being told I should get that job. I should get a promotion. My best friend in the world was given this amazing job opportunity to make literally four times what he was making. He turned it down. And I respect of him for because he understood who he was what made him happy he realized that that was not a gap that he felt like like crossing so what happens is we don't create personally our own scale of what great is and so we're, we're getting that feeling of the fact that we're not good enough and that we suck because we're comparing ourselves from failing in something that really when you go to the root of it it's like yeah i was just doing that because the world said i was supposed to do that and no wonder why, because you didn't have the drive, didn't care. So this apathy you have towards it really is is undeserving. Because yeah, if you go to the root of it, the, you, I'm supposed to, right? Like I like no. like oh, I'm supposed to want this. I'm supposed to. I don't know why I don't want it, but everybody else wants it, so I'm supposed maybe to I want should. it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then they go towards it, and then and so I I tell people set your own scale to begin with, because then it's like I have my own scale of what's great for Anthony. I'm in season of dad right now. I'm not trying to be Mr. Mogul, change the world, you know, and, and be like all my time. Like I want to like go and play baseball in the backyard and like catch lizards with my kids. Like I'm cool when they go all to college and I'm 44, believe me, I'm going to turn into a monster at that time. And you already know the age. I like it. You're like, I, my you're like, like, when I'm 44, <laughs> my wife knows, but this is okay. And now this now if I listen to the world, they're like, dude, you know, these people, you can do this. You got the experience. Like people are in my ear a lot. And they're like, why aren't you bigger than you are? And I'm like, well, what does that do for, for me? And in my scale, what I'm doing is great. Now, if I was to adopt their scale, I'd feel like crap every day. And then, yeah, I'm not going to try. Why even do it? Right. Cause then I'm, I'm comparing the actions I'm taking and now it's like, ah, so I believe like you do. I think there is a space. I'm going to explore that of this apathy to not cross the gap. But I do think that a lot of us create this from a space meant that has nothing to do with us. No one questions their beliefs ever. No one questions their responses and reactions to situations. They just do them. And then they just have this life. And that's why they go, I don't know why I haven't got where I'm supposed to get yet. Well, because yeah. you're not looking at what has been responsible for where you're at now. Or the classic, like, you know, the, the I, I hate the idea of the midlife crisis, but the people who blow up their life, because yeah. they get to a point and they realize, oh, like, none of this stuff is the stuff that I want, you know? Uh, <laughs> there's an actual way to break that down. Eric Erickson had this uh, this framework, and I've, it's, it's a lot of thinking, but I broke it down to some simplistic aspects. Essentially, in life, you have uh, four stages you're in in terms of identity and where you're at. One of them, uh, we'll look at this at axis that sits. What you have is whether you're searching for identity or whether you're locked in. If you are not searching for identity and you have not locked into one, you're lost. This is, I mean, at one point I wanted to take my life because I had lost the identity. I wasn't locked into football player, husband, gym owner, successful. And I wasn't even looking to be somebody. And I just, mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be here. Then you got people like you're talking about, they go, damn, all right. Uh, I didn't go searching, but mom and dad said to get a job, be a doctor. So I did that. And all of a sudden I'm down in my fifties and I'm like, I don't like this job. I didn't even go search what else was in the world. I just went down this track and now I'm here. It's like my whole life. I've been doing stuff I really don't want to do. So let me go find myself, which is a key word. Let me go find myself. What does find mean? I search. So some people will unlock themselves in that identity and they'll go search. 
I'm closing my practice. I'm going to go live by the beach and surf all day, right? <laughs> so they unlock from the identity. They go searching. They're, it's called open. I am open to experiencing the world. I want to see what it has. I'm opening those, those, those scuba goggles up more. I'm wider with my vision, right? I'm going to go skydive. I'm going to go take a trip to, to Bali. I'm going to go sit with do ayahuasca. I'm gonna, right? They do these things. They open themselves up. And then within that journey, they find something that says, oh, I like this. Mm-hmm. And they lock into an identity. And then they're what's called found. Now, I'm not done because it's interesting. So a lot of people find themselves. They get found, right? They have this great job or something they do and they love it. And then they get to a point where they start going, man, I, I love this thing, but man, it's not, uh, it's not light me up anymore. I don't know if I, you know, but then I feel bad telling anybody else because they think what I'm doing is amazing. Yeah, yeah, just, you just went off and did this thing and they're yeah, all patting you on the world, back. It's world scale comes in again because I'm comparing myself and the scale to everybody else, how they're going to see, see things, what they would do. But the reality is, is like there's points in time when you've reached this level of, of, of the end of this, this area and you can very easily say, you know what? I love everything I've accomplished, but I want to know what else is there. And I can unlock again and go searching and then lock back in. And it's a fluid aspect of life as it should be. But far too many people haven't got to the point of realizing like, one, these things are possible for your life. And if you don't adopt the world scale, you can find something great for you. My friend, me and him have nothing in common. He's a, he's a, I'm a six foot one, 240 pound black guy. He's like a five foot eight bald white guy who's a police officer. He is not athletic. He's just vastly different. We operate so well together. Love this dude. He's, he's so moral and, and just. What's unique though, it's like he does what he loves. He's a, got a job. It makes him sick to think about doing what I do. And it makes me sick to think about doing what he does. And so the uniqueness is we have got this level of such mutual respect because we both have our own scales that we adhere to and love. And it makes us peaceful inside. We're settled inside. It's the best way I can explain it. And if you're around unsettled people, you'll kind of know. Like they just they make you feel neurotic. Like they can't shut up. They're always just making weird jokes. Just shut up, bro. Like just come, just hang out with me, man. You don't got to do anything. Just be here. So because we're settled inside, we can be at peace and we have a great friendship. And this is anybody, no matter how different you are, when you have found who you are and you're settled and you're living your life enjoyable, it attracts other people of, of similar aspect, no matter what they're doing. And it, it creates this amazing, unique life because I believe life is all relationships, man. It's like we're creating a small relationship here just in chatting, right? Like my wife and I have a relationship, a deeper one. My kids have one, but that is the beauty of this world. Every single thing that I do is around relationships, whether I'm making money to facilitate moments with relationships, whether I am creating a connection or helping a client, it's a relationship. And there's so much that's in that, that no one's really unpacking and thinking, even the relationship of yourself and what will make you close that gap we talk about. There's a relationship to be built there. And when you start leading into those things, man, it all becomes this blossoming space. And really what it boils down to is, am I willing to do the work to cross the gap that I know is my gap, regardless of judgments outside of people. And when I get there, find peace with it. I, I wanted to quickly ask or circle back on something because I don't know if I'm connecting dots that exist or not, but you talked about the difference between being and becoming. Yeah. Do you believe, uh, obviously we're all becoming something, whether we're, whether we're pointed the right direction or not, but mm-hmm. is there even any version of us being or is everything the game of becoming? No, we're being, I think we're being in the moments of it. And then what happens and how we become, right? Because the actions that we take anchor us to something, whether it's the guy who freaks out whenever something goes wrong. Like he's just like, my son is at school. He's like the, the police officer. Every time something happens, he's the guy. And it happens at the action level, right? So the action levels of what I do creates the return, which is my outcome. The outcome creates the environment that I'm in, whether it's physical internally or physical externally. And that anchors down who I am. It's actually a process, right? I call it the self-mastery loop. It's always running. So when we take an action, it keeps the loop spinning. If we don't, the loop stops. And when I say being, in those actions, there's like the little bubble of, of who am I before the action takes place? How do I, like you talked about the gut and what I do. How do I filter this stuff? How do I flow through this stuff? What turns into something from there? And what's interesting, I think, is, uh, is we get to these moments where we don't actually take into account the fact that there's a lot going on before the action takes place. Whether I, I believe I'm capable or I affirm it or my thoughts are off. And then that's me being, right? That's me unconsciously being, which leads to an action. 
And so when I say who we're being is who we're becoming, it's because we are being somebody who filters things, sees things, taking an action, which is what I do. And then the action makes me become somebody. Like I can become a parent when all of a sudden the action comes out. It's all, it's all flow, right? So who I was being in the moments led to me becoming something, whether it's like, you know, I am being this guy who woke up, had a bad day, go to work, the boss has some, I fire off at the boss, we argue back and forth. My action is now me becoming a uh, former employee. You know, like it's all the matter of the in-betweens and no one's consciously thinking about what I'm doing. They don't think about who they are or why they are who they are. And that's a difficult thing. I think that's a problem with our society, especially now, because here's the thing. If you go to the psychology of it, there's what's called the psychosocial stages. And at the age of like 13, to about 18, 21, we have this stage where we go from what's our role and our identity and there's confusion. So what happens growing up, we have these different levels of understanding love and, and connection and everything. But then we get to this point of like, by like 16, 18, like you got to feel for who you are, Mark. You're like, I'm this guy, I'm the football, player. I'm whatever I am. And then we're thrust into a world at that age and we just have what's called role confusion. And role confusion essentially is like, I don't know where I fit in this career thing, this relationship thing. I don't know um, if I'm supposed to like, like these things or dislike these, my culture, my society, oh, all these things. And I'm thrust in sometimes unprepared. And what happens is our society doesn't realize what's going on. We just do it. And then all of a sudden we figure it out. And it's, a lot of it's just sheer survival. No one thought it out. And then I think what's going on in our society now, unfortunately, is usually by 21, you're kind of done with that. Like for the most part, you you kind of, I know who I am. I got a job. I've been in this role. I've been doing my thing for a little bit. And it's not until like 50 years old midlife crisis or when the damn world changes, like it's happening now for everybody that now I don't know my role. Do I have a job? Do I not have a job? Am I Republican? Am I Democrat? Am I pro-white? Am I pro-black? Is there, does Black Lives Matter or not? Like, dude, we're, we're like right now is the most weird time I've, ever, I've noticed in history that I've been researched of the entire world experiencing simultaneously a drop back to role confusion. And so we're on this unstable ground and it sucks because we are being people that are becoming somebody without knowing it in a world that we don't even know what the world is becoming. Mm. So I, I would, I would think during the second world war, the world came together, but think about the shifts between gender and working and staying home versus not staying home and what it meant to manliness. And then the men came yeah. home and then the women were kicked out of the workforce and back here. Yeah. So there's probably some things we could learn from the past, but, but should. I, I agree one with problem you. Is everybody has a voice now. Even we have a voice back then. It was like, I got one voice and everybody kind of had their thing and they got it. Now it's like misinformation and too much information. It's a, it's, it's even more, discombobulated because not everybody needs a voice dude not everybody needs to <laughs> their mind but everyone has the right to to they say what do. they want you can say you what you want don't have to but, listen <laughs> yeah does everybody need a megaphone though i don't think everybody needs a megaphone dude like say what you want i'm not going to take that from you dude but i don't need a million people watching some girl shake her butt on social and talk about we need to go ahead and be better wop 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 like it's just it's so weird I, my son sent me a video of some girl she's like i want my lyrics to inspire people and it goes to a song she has you know like so inspirational what? you know it's just like dude everybody doesn't need a microphone at all that's so funny but so so if if the difference so so if if being is who we are and how we filter it and then how we choose to react in the moment leads to certain outcomes what's what's that way to interrupt that pattern is it yeah. is it simply self-awareness is there a Part question we're supposed to be asking ourselves yeah, there's some definite things. So one is, um, so one, there is a way, right? So if I, if I work you through real quick, it, it essentially the self-mastery loop is we have this identity that I have. It leads me to having certain beliefs that lead me to have certain thoughts that have feelings from the thoughts that then I take an action from. I have an outcome. I create this environment of how I feel inside or what I see outside that I've created, which then anchors back to who I see I, myself to be. My identity gets anchored down. And the way you change this is between the feelings and actions. Because most people take actions and actions change everything but they take them either like halfway or not fully bold or they don't take them at all because it scares them. And so what happens is you can't actually change your life or your identity without doing something different because belief is rooted in something I can see. And if I don't see myself doing something, I can't believe I'm better, believe I'm different, believe I'm changed. And so what you have to do is activate what, what I call the secret self. Um, a guy named Todd Herman calls it alter ego. It's who do I need to be in that moment? And you have to think this through, right? You have to actually think, what does that moment need? Like what kind of person 
will operate the way that needs to be operating in that moment. Well, who is that person? What would they do? What would they say? How would they, you know, kind of have things work? And you activate this person that moment when it's needed to then go out and do that thing. Like, and I played football. My coach was in the sideline. I went out of the game. The coach is what I'm talking about. The coach is the one guiding, structuring. The player goes and plays the game. Too many of us bring the coach onto the field and we're all discombobulated. We don't take action. Leave the coach in the field. You were in the playroom. You, you figured it all out. Now go do that thing. Just shut up and go hike, right? Play the game. You play the game. You get this outcome. You can learn from it. What's crazy is if you stop worrying about what people are going to think about you just for a split second when you do it, you can actually have a vast different action that has a different outcome, a different environment, all spins different. Think about a kid jumping off a cliff. We were kids jumping off cliffs, like in the water, in the water, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you jump off a cliff, the first time you go up, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing this. This is crazy. I'm not the kind of person. That, what if I die? I believe I'm going to die. You're going to die, dude. Oh, I'm scared. I'm not doing it, guys. And then eventually, like, I don't, you shut off the thinking brain. You just run full speed and just, ah, you jump and you land in the water. Your environment, you feel good and proud. Everybody's clapping. You're in the water like, oh, this feels good. Look at this water. Look at Susan over there. You jumped like no problem. No problem. Because now what happened is it it undid some of the concrete of your identity and a different belief. Like maybe I'm good. The thoughts change. Feelings change. Now you're doing backflips and flying squirrels. You know what I mean? Like it's the same thing for life. So when you're asking like, what do I do? How do I change? That's how you do it. You find out what are the things that 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 identity needs to be doing and operating with. And then from there, I say, okay, great. In these moments, I'm going to activate that person. Because eventually, once you've become that, like taking the actions enough, you become that person. There's no separation. You don't need to activate that person because now it's spinning the way you want. Now, when you want something at a higher level, new activated person comes into play, right? But prior, you can flow. Like the level you and I are flowing at right now, we have success. If we want more, you and I both know something's got to adjust. It's going to be scary. It's going to be different. I got to activate that dude wanting to activate that dude and then get to that level. Now I'm going to feel the exact same way I do now, but I'll be operating up here at a higher level. And so this isn't fake it till you make it because, because it, because you're consciously modeling your actions or behaviors around the type of person that you intend to be. Is, is that right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And it, the thing is, is every, I think who is it? Um, Simon, uh, Simon said, no, 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 no. Me. Oh, Seth. Seth Godin says this. He did a speech somewhere. I love that he said it this way because the first time I heard it, he says, at the end of the day, a lot of people have this imposter syndrome. It's not me. It's not who I am. He says, but when you get a dream past what you're living right now, what in the heck makes you think that you're not an imposter to go after it? Because it's not who you are right now. You've given it such a negative connotation and a tone that nobody wants to go because no one wants to be an imposter. Like somebody named it wrong. He says, but if you don't have a dream big enough, you're never going to feel the imposter. So the moment you do, you should know you're on the right track. And now what you do is you think, what would make you not the imposter? Well, if I was doing that thing, well, how do you do that thing? You just do the thing. Like, that's it. There's, you just do it. And then over time, you become that. And, you, and here's the thing. Give yourself grace. Give yourself grace of knowing you're going to suck in the beginning. Like, I think so many people, that whole growth versus fixed mindset from Carol Dweck, it's big because people try stuff and like, oh, I'm not good. Yeah, because you just tried it, bro. I've never touched a bow and arrow before. Why would you think you're going to hit a bullseye? You never held a bow and arrow before. You know, like, you got to find some peace and some joy and, and solidarity and a fact of like, enjoy the sucking process. Have fun with it. Try it out. But here's the thing. After your 10, 20, 40, 50, 60, 100 hours into that thing, you will get better. You will be. You may not be the expert in the pro just yet, but now what happens, it's more of who you are. Because when you invest into something, you want to return. If I give you money, dude, I want more money back, right? So the idea is, well, our investment in life is the actions. The return is the competency and the confidence in doing this thing. And then it gives us less of the imposter syndrome. So over time, you feel more like that person. So I think a part of that is like, Stop going into things thinking you're going to be great and stop worrying about what someone might think of you because you tried it. It's supposed to suck. If they say something, they suck. I love it so much. I love it so much. We're, we're almost out of time. Um, but, but I did want to ask for, for those who are facing, so those who want more, but they have the doubt, they have the fear, they have the insecurities, they're questioning whether they can do it or not. Yeah. Um, most of us aren't living up to our potential, even the successful people. I self included to their potential. Um, what do you say to them? Yeah, man, you gotta, uh, you gotta make shit happen. That's what I, that's what I tell people. <laughs> Just make it happen. No, you know, that that's a, that's a facetious one. I'm not being honest, to be honest, totally. 
one, you have to settle in with the, the fact that uh, you got to find the joy in the difficult things, your own level of joy. You can read some great books on habits and structure. It's going to boil down to what things do you do every single day. And some you will enjoy and some you won't enjoy it first. You have to find a way to enjoy it. Incentivize yourself. But the biggest thing is I think, unfortunately in life, we do, we do take on habits that can help us be better. And a lot of the times we take them on because we saw the, the guy on, you know, Dr. Phil said so and Oprah said so and Anthony said so. And I'll be the first one to tell you my habits and the things I do may not in any way make your life better. So don't adopt them. Don't. I need you to adopt the, the understanding of why I do what I do. though. I do them because I know who I want to become. When I say I'm the season of dad, my identity is father first. That's, that's why I do the things that I do. I am father first. So when that's part of my identity, the things that I do when I work out, when I have food, when I turn my day off, like when I stop working, that's on me. So if I sit here and tell you, get up at eight o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the morning and do this, it may not be necessary for you. So the first thing is figure out who do you want to be? Ask a simple question. How do I want to experience my life? Like what I want my actual daily experience to be, not what I want to get done I don't want my experience in my life to be because when you understand that and that starts the, the whole process, now I can say, okay, okay, great. What would I be doing in those? Like, how would I get that experience to be real? And then I could start thinking about things that I want to do and how I want to get them done. And then I would start thinking about what habits I have to have in place to make that happen. Here's a great question people can ask themselves. It's a simple one. In the moments we talked about the planning and then the, the, the plan moments and everything. One of the big questions I have people ask in the moments that are surprising because it'll happen what would the person who has everything I want do right now? Mm. It's a simple question. And, it, and the thing is, if I, I had people say, well, I just think about what my higher self would do. We don't know that person. We haven't thought about that person. And I mean, it's just, it sounds good. Higher self. What, what is that? What do they got like a crown on? What are they, you know, are they, are they actually high? Who is that person? So what I say is like, no, no, the person who has the things you want, because you can attach yourself and see what they do, how they respond. And I tell people like, Hey, if I'm not around, like, what would Anthony do? Now, I'm not Jesus, but like, what would WWAD? Because it puts you in a position of like, ah, oh, yeah, I keep making a complaint that it's too difficult. I don't have time. All right. He would turn off the phone. He wouldn't watch Netflix. He'd sit down. He'd set the, like, you can start thinking about it. And so what I would say is first, who do you want to become? And then chart out some of the actions. And then in the moments when life happens and it pops up, try to be conscious of your resistant moments, conscious of the moments that things just seem hard and ask yourself, what would Anthony do? Or what would, my, what would the person as everything I want do? What would Mark do? Because when you put it outside somebody, you can start to think about what they might actually do. And then it's like, oh, I don't want to, but I need to. And then you do it. And then you start finding that it moves the needle. You have success and you attach it to some positive thing. You do more of it. And after a while, you're sitting at the table next to all your peers of people that one time you looked up to, now they're your equals. It doesn't happen without doing that though. And yes, no matter how far behind you might see yourself right now, the time's going to pass. This is age old. The time is going to pass. So in that time passing, be more conscious of what's happening in that time. Now, come on. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't that something? I mean, I listened back to that podcast time and time again. Anthony's experience, I mean, it showed me, but it shows all of us that we can become whatever we want to in order to achieve the success that we define for ourselves. Now, the three takeaways for me, number one, as humans, we operate. If we ignore the personal upgrades of our operating system, we will get left behind. Number two, being is who we are in the moment. Oh my goodness. How deep is that? And how we react to it leads us to what we become from that moment. And number three, we must not measure our success based on what the world says success is, but on what we, each of us, define it to be. Now, the reason we do this podcast is you have to move. If you are not moving forward, if you're not taking action, if you're not building momentum, if you're not doing all those things to make yourself proud, you're standing still and standing still is death. I just wanna remind you, for me, please go to Apple Podcasts, rate and review it like my friend Steven Scoggins did for me. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe uh, as my friend Joshua has. And if you want to connect with me, drop me a DM on IG as my friend Joe often does. Remember, those of us who have something to prove can show the world and ourselves that we have what it takes to make it happen. But you have to think big. You've got to be bold and you must say yes. Why? Because we do hard things. Now let's go.